All right, let's talk omegas. So that's going to be your omega-3, 6, 9s, sometimes used interchangeably with the term essential fatty acids. So which ones should you be taking? Should you take the 3, 6, 9, a combination of them? And why should you be taking them? So let's do a really quick breakdown. So omega-3, 6, 9. Well, out of those three, two of them are essential, meaning we need to get them in our diet, and one of them is not because our body can synthesize it on its own. And that's going to be your omega-9. So you don't necessarily need to get omega-9 in your diet or in supplemental form. But omega-3 and omega-6 are essential. That means that we cannot synthesize them and we have to either get them in our diet or get them in a supplemental form. Now, out of the two, we really only need to focus on one, and that's going to be our omega-3. Why? Well, your average North American, and if you're not in North America, maybe you're somewhere else in the world, you're in Europe, might be a similar scenario. Most of us here in North America get way too much omega-6, and that's because you're getting omega-6 in a lot of your vegetable oils like soybean oil, corn oil, and safflower. Now, there's a healthy ratio between the two, between omega-3 and omega-6, that's important. They say that ratio is somewhere between 1 to 1 and 1 to 4. So, on that high end of it, that would mean for, let's say, every 4 grams of omega-6 that you're getting, you should be getting at least 1 gram of omega-3. Here's the problem, though. Your average American has a ratio of about 1 to 10. Obviously way out of whack here. And what that's associated with is a lot of pro-inflammatory issues because your omega-3s and your omega-6s, that ratio between the two, is going to help regulate inflammation. So that's why they say in North America this is probably one of the bigger causes of all the inflammatory issues that we have. So. We don't need to focus on six or nine. Nine we can synthesize on our own. Six we're getting a ton of. That means we want to focus on our omega-3. Now, there's a lot of different terms you're going to hear thrown around, so I just want to break these down real quick. Out of the omega-3, you have a DHA, an ALA, and an EPA. Now, your DHA and your EPA... Those are considered your marine sources. So those are going to come from salmon, mackerel, herring, anchovies, sardines, a lot of fish that most people don't want to eat. That's a great thing about supplements. Then you're going to have your, what you call vegetable source, which is going to be ALA. Most common source of that is going to be flax. Now here's the thing. Our body needs DHA and EPA. If we're consuming, say this one right here, this is omega-3 from flax oil, so plant-based. If I'm taking a supplement like this, our body can convert that to DHA and EPA, but there is an inefficiency in that conversion process. So we'll talk about that here in a second. So our best option is always going to be consuming DHA and EPA directly. So that would be a supplement like this. So this is just an omega-3 and this is only coming from marine sources. So that's gonna be what I would consider your very best option. Doesn't mean it has to be in this pill format, but an omega-3 from marine sources. Now, if I just can't stomach the idea of taking some sort of fish oil product, or I'm a vegan, well then you can go the ALA route. But going back to that inefficiency, no one can quite agree on what that inefficiency really looks like, that conversion from ALA to DHA, EPA. But probably the safe bet is going to be about twice as much ALA as you need of DHA and EPA. So what is that DHA, EPA requirement? Well, you want to be somewhere about one to three grams a day. It's going to vary depending on age, gender, a lot of different factors, but that's a pretty safe range of one to three grams a day. So if we're going to take a plant-based supplement that's an ALA omega-3, that's
that means we're going to want to probably get about double that as a safe bet. So you're going to be talking about two to six grams of ALA. So when you're looking for a supplement, a couple different form factors. These are soft gels. These aren't bad. Do you burp them up and taste like fish? Sometimes. I... Some of the different brands do different things. They'll put lemon in there or they'll, they have some sort of proprietary technology where supposedly it's not as fishy. It's a great quality product. I just don't really care for the capsules. This is a brand that I've been using for years, Barleen's. This is a liquid, believe it or not, actually tastes really good, even the one with the fish oils. This one's flavored like orange cream skull. This one's strawberry banana. So they've kind of perfected the flavoring technology in these, so I don't mind these. You can mix them in with shakes, et cetera. It's really just gonna come down to your personal preference. This one though is actually a blend of these two. So this has your omega-3, six, and nine in a nice balance ratio. It's a combination of your marine sources plus your flax. Do I think you need an omega-3, six, nine? No, not really. I think for most of us that have an imbalance between omega-3 and omega-6, I think it's probably more beneficial for your average person just to focus on an omega-3 product only. So there's the rundown on your essential fatty acids, which is going to be omega-3, omega-6, omega-3 being the most important, and then choose a form factor that suits you, suits your, your taste preferences, or maybe your, uh, let's call it uh, food intake preferences, whether you're vegan, or maybe you're already consuming a lot of fish in your diet, hopefully you are. If you eat a lot of salmon on a regular basis, then you're not gonna need as much, but I still recommend getting a good supplement. Again, this is something that everybody should be taking from you know, young children to adults, even to senior citizens, probably one of the most underrated supplements there are. So that is your rundown on your essential fatty acids.